hi guys, welcome to my channel. On today's video I'm going to be reviewing a book. Not a Doctor Who episode for a change, a book. It's something that I've been meaning to do for a while, it's something I haven't done before on this channel. Something I've done once before on my sister's channel with her where we reviewed a Doctor Who book. Uh, this time though I'm going to be reviewing this. Isaac Asimov's The Foundation. I picked this up as part of my celebration of Sci-Fi Day uh, back in January right back at the beginning of my Festivity 365 challenge which uh, if you don't know is where I'm celebrating a different holiday every single day of the year and I've been doing that since January uh, 2017 and it has been tiring but this was one of the earlier ones um, I'll leave a card up above if you want to watch it and I went on a hunt for an Isaac Asimov book because the day was created to honour him and his birthday Basically, it, it, Sci-Fi Day is on that day because that's when Isaac Asimov's birthday was. So uh, I went and I found this. I had never read an Isaac Asimov book before. The only one I'd heard of was uh, I, Robot, because it had been turned into the film with Will Smith, was it? Yeah, I think it was Will Smith. But they, but I didn't want to read that, and I picked up this instead. It's generally credited with being one of the key influences of science fiction in the in the latter half of the 20th century. There are so many people that are apparently being influenced by these books, but specifically by the Foundation books and by Asimov uh, more generally. He writes a lot of books uh, about robots as well and a lot of the stuff in, in that sort of stuff has been absorbed into sort of our cultural perception of robots in fiction as well. But the Foundation books were, you know, people like George Lucas were inspired by them um, and later science fiction writers like um, Douglas Adams were inspired by them. So, uh, you know, uh, high expectations for this. Also, to increase the high expectations, winner of the Hugo Award for Best All-Time Series. This book is part one of a originally a three-part trilogy. There have been additional books in the series since then that go back and some of them are prequels. I've only read this one, I haven't read the other two, so um, I'm judging just this book rather than the whole series. Asimov was 21 when he wrote this, so he was young. He was younger than I am. I'm not going to tell you how much younger than, he, <laughs> than I am he was, but he was younger than I am. Um, and uh, apparently he was inspired by the Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire book. I can't remember who that's by, but it's a history book. It's not even fiction. Obviously not fiction, but it's... Uh, it was inspired by the events that are depicted in, in that historical book, and a lot of that is mirrored in the kind of setup of the Galactic Empire that comes in this book. So the basic premise of the book is what happened... In fact, shall I read the back? The Galactic Empire has prospered for 12,000 years. Nobody suspects that at the heart of a thriving empire is rotting until psycho-historian Harry Seldon uses the new science to foresee its terrible fate. Exiled to the desert planet Terminus, Seldon establishes a colony of the greatest minds in the Empire, a foundation which holds the key to changing the fate of the galaxy. However, the death throes of the Empire breed hostile new enemies and the young foundation's fate will be threatened first. Basically what happens in this novel is there's this science called psychohistory, which basically it's it's what if social sciences that we practice today sort of writ large um, and, and using mathematical calculations uh, to be able to work out exactly what's going to happen on a on a macro big scale uh, with civilizations um, and this guy, Harry Seldon, uses this to predict that the Galactic Empire, which controls the whole galaxy in the, at the beginning of this story, is going to fall. He proposes that there's nothing they can do to stop this and that uh, the only thing they can do is decrease the amount of time that the universe spends in barbarism afterwards. Um, there's going to be a period of darkness, there's going to be a, you know, a, a dark ages, but he says he can shorten that by setting up this foundation on this planet. So he does. And then what we see in the book is various stages of that foundation's life over decades and even centuries. Because it's a bit of an odd structure to this book. There's not, it's not one 
it's, it's, I mean, it is one story in one way, but it's in another is loads of different short stories. And in fact, it was originally published as several short stories in the, uh, I think it was, um, Amazing, what's it called? Um, I've got it here somewhere. Amazing Science Fiction Magazine, I think it was called. Astounding Science Fiction Magazine. In the Astounding Science Fiction Magazine, he published several short stories, and it was only later that he collected them into this novel and created a prologue for it to kind of link it all a bit together. Now, there are good points and bad points to this structure in this novel. Um, what we see is the evolving of this new civilization, uh, this new this new world that he has put together, initially based mainly around scientists um, and people that will work to archive the universe's knowledge, um, although that's what they're told at the start. And, and we see them over decades and, like I say, over centuries as the empire collapses around them and how they react to it, what uh, challenges that throws up, and you can see the machinations of different things happening and what Harry has predicted. Harry is only really, in, in terms of being alive, in the prologue of this. Because then, by the next chapter, he has died. The Foundation is in its still quite infancy. Uh, but he pops up in hologram form throughout the book because he has actually predicted all of the disasters that they're going to encounter. Um, and at, at various intervals, they encounter various disasters. And he has predicted them and he has... It's only after that they've come through them that they realise that the, the hologram of him appears and he explains exactly what has happened and turns out he predicted exactly what would happen. And this is all leading to some grand plan, which I'm guessing will, will come up in the next few books, of how the universe is going to be spread out from... Uh, civilization spread out again from the Foundation. Because of the time jumps you get between the chapters, you don't really stick with any characters for any long periods of time. Then, you know, the most uh, a cap, an individual character is really in this is two chapters. And then you're seeing them like there's there's two chapters which are sort of within one guy's lifetime. And the first chapter is when he's in his sort of, I think it's 20s. And then the next chapter is when he's like on the verge of retirement. So the you don't really see a lot of character growth. So if you, if the if you're really into your characters and you know if you don't have those personal interactions and personal relationships going through the whole of a novel or indeed the whole of a series if that's what you absolutely must have from a book this probably isn't for you what this deals with is more on the, the sort of macro scale um and in in that sense it's really interesting it's really interesting seeing the the sort of the way the uh the universe the the way the um the civilization grows and evolves and it brings up some quite interesting themes i think one of which is religion as a tool for mass control when they start this there isn't really any religion in this universe and as the world around them the universe around this planet descends into barbarism they end up being the only ones in their local area of the galaxy with any sort of decent technology atomic technology in this instance and what that means is that they can use that to control other people and the nearby barbaric planets and the way they do this is by starting a religion basically they start a religion in order to manipulate events and uh, use their superior technology as this kind of mysticism that other people won't understand so in order to use any of this technology people have to come and join the church that they have created, which is a really interesting thing to explore, and I think it does it really well here. Um, it, you see sort of several stages of, of different sort of methods of them surviving and different political systems that evolve and change over time. Um, but I think it's that dealing with how they use religion as a tool, how they create religion as a tool, that's really interesting. and probably parallels quite a lot of how religion has been used in in our world certainly by play things like the roman empire and things like that again the parallel to the roman empire there it's really interesting stuff actually one negative i will say and this is might be a time you know a product of the time it's written but there are no 
significant female characters in this at all. There are no female characters that have any impact on the plot whatsoever. I think there's only one named female character in it, full stop, and she's just the wife of somebody. And she's the, I think she's the only one that actually gets a mention of a name. That may be the... That's probably something to do with the time it was written. It was written in the 1940s and, you know, he was probably reflecting, how the, you know, his view of the world at the time, which was which would have been something along the lines of all the important decisions are made by men. Um, it just jars a bit when you're reading it as a modern audience and you notice that. It, it's a bit of a shame. Also, this probably isn't the book for you if you like your big set pieces, your big action uh, things. This isn't, a, you know, this isn't a Star Wars or even a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Nobody's going to go and storm a rebel base or anything or a em galactic empire base and blow up a super weapon or anything like that. That's not going to happen in this. You get skirmishes, you get some some gunfire a little bit, but it's, there, there are definitely no set pieces. It's got a very mellow pace to it in much of the book. However, I wouldn't say that that means it's not thrilling and suspenseful. I found myself really eager to find out what happened and how the society has progressed in the next sort of the next uh, sort of period that they jump to. And they don't always jump the same. Sometimes they jump, you know, 50 years, sometimes they jump 100 years. It varies, but it's really interesting every time to see that jump and to see what changes in the society have made, how they've spread out further. It's good stuff if you really like, you know, if you're interested in societies and how they work and how they interact. My favourite quote in it is, violence is the last refuge of the incompetent. I just like that quote because I think it's so true. I think that's a great point. Don't resort to violence. If you're resorting to violence, it means you've lost the argument, basically. There's no real narrative conclusion to the book either. But that's part of the structure of it, really. There's Because it's a load of short stories, effectively, there's no real feeling of conclusion to the, to the sort of end of the book because each bit, each chapter has its own conclusion. Um, and there's no real sort of wrap-up. Now, whether or not that would feel different after reading the whole trilogy, I don't know. I, like I say, I've only really read this first... Well, I only have read this first book... Um, I definitely want to read more, though. It's definitely made me, even though the, there was no conclusion, I want to see what happens next. I want to see where this goes on from here. There are, as I said, more than just the trilogy as well. There's a prequel books and some other ones that tie in that he wrote about 30 years after writing these ones. Um, so I'm, I'm going to read the rest of these at some point. And when I do, I might do another review of those. Maybe sum up the whole series as a whole instead. But... Uh, but yeah, this one has got me interested. And it's, you know what, it's a very digestible read. I mean, look at that. It's quite thin. You're going to get through that. I mean, it's a, I mean, you could get through that really quickly. I took about a month, but that's just because I had very little time with making all these festivity videos to actually <laughs> read much. Um, but you could get through that really quickly. They're digestible, easy to read books. I have a feeling some of the later ones get a bit thicker, much like the Harry Potter ones or any series, really, where they, they start getting going, they tend to get a bit thicker. But um, I would say it's giving it size. If you like science fiction and if you think you're interested in the kind of grander macro scale of things where how things work on a, on a galactic scale, not so much politics, but I mean, it's slightly polit but it's more social so sociology if you're interested in sociology and things like that this this is a very interesting book to read and a very interesting novel to read and you know what I said there's no characters in it at all but I will say yeah this sounds a bit cheesy but the society itself in the book is the character that is the character of the book Isaac Asimov Foundation it's it's an interesting one I will read some more of it, uh, of the series, definitely. Thank you for watching. I've been meaning to make this video since February, so that's taken me a while. I'm going to do try and do some more book reviews, um, but at this rate, uh, it might be one every, like, four months or so. <laughs> I've got to finish reading the books. I'm definitely going to do some Doctor Who book reviews at some point, um, and any other books I read, I will try and review. Uh, but literally, I've read this and one other book this year, so it's uh, slow going at the moment. 
but that's just because the other videos are taking up all my time. Thank you for watching. Please, please do like if you liked this review, if you thought it was helpful. Let me know if you've read this book, what you think below. I would love to know what your feelings are. Um, and uh, Or if you've read the whole series. No spoilers, though. I don't want to find out what's going to happen. Uh, thank you, and I will see you again next time. Bye. Thank you.